Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and in this video, I will be introducing you to Intel's new Evo platform for laptops. Full disclosure, this video is being sponsored by Intel and Amazon. I want to thank them for their support of this content and my channel. But to be completely clear, I have not been told by Intel what to say. I've looked over their marketing materials, thought about my use of Intel laptops over the past 20 years, and also looked at the models available on the market today to give you my impressions of what Evo is all about. Before we get into Evo, let's take a step back way back in time to 2003 when Intel released its first platform for laptops. That time, it was called Centrino. And Centrino meant three things. First of all, an Intel CPU. At that time, it was Pentium M, later Core and Core 2. Also required was a chipset from Intel, which seems obvious, but back then it wasn't quite as obvious because a lot of people would use competing chipsets, for instance, from NVIDIA to support Intel CPUs. And third of all, you had their wireless module, Wi-Fi. This was a newfangled thing. A lot of people didn't know what it was all about and didn't think it was worth the extra cost and thought Intel was just kind of trying to sell its own wireless chipsets. Well, of course, hindsight being 2020, we realized this was revolutionary. It was an amazing enhancement to any laptop and you wouldn't buy a laptop today without Wi-Fi, of course. And we'll get back to that in a moment when we get to Evo. Now, let's fast forward about nine years to 2012. That's when Intel introduced its Ultrabook platform for laptops. This was a very big deal back in 2012 because all the Microsoft Windows based manufacturers of laptops had really fallen behind. Apple was a tremendous competitor. It introduced its 2008 MacBook Air to great acclaim, under three pounds, super thin and really attractive. And interestingly, it had Intel inside. So Intel knew it was possible to create a mind blowing laptop with Intel products. And yet all the other manufacturers weren't doing it. Furthermore, Apple, of course, introduced its iPad, which was stealing a lot of market share from laptops. So Intel said, hey guys, let's shake things up. I want you to catch up to Apple and maybe go a step beyond that as well. Now, in fact, there was no weight requirement, but these laptops had to be under 0.8 inches thick, which was pretty thin at the time. They also had to have a minimum of five hours of battery life. And of course they had to have Intel on board and have an SSD. Again, that was pretty revolutionary at the time and Intel was a major marketer of SSDs being a leader in the field at the time. So again, not too surprising that SSDs were required, but I think we can all agree it was a great idea. Now, one manufacturer in particular really got a good head start here and that was Asus. It hadn't been a major brand in the laptop market up until that point, but it introduced its ZenBook around this time, of course, piggybacking off the Ultrabook name. And the ZenBook really took off and became synonymous with stylish ultralight laptops. Now in 2013, I think the Ultrabook brand took a nosedive and that's because Intel added an additional requirement of a touchscreen. It did it for two reasons. First of all, of course, tablets were very popular at that time and Intel probably thought, maybe rightfully at the time, that adding a touchscreen would make a laptop more like a tablet and it would make it sell better. This didn't turn out to be true. The other thing that Intel was probably having to deal with was some pressure from Microsoft, which had introduced its new Windows 8 operating system in August 2012 which was heavily touch based. And of course there weren't a lot of touch screen enabled laptops or computers out there. So Microsoft probably tapped on Intel's shoulder and said, hey, can you just throw this into your requirements for laptops? Intel did it and Ultrabook sank. The Ultrabook brand was all about lightweight and affordable laptops that ran a long time on a battery. And adding a touch screen added weight, thickness, and reduced the battery life. So it was a problem for Ultrabooks to have that requirement of a touchscreen, and I think it was one of the few mistakes that Intel made with the Ultrabook brand. Now let's fast forward nine years later. Here we are in 2021. We have the new platform called Evo, also referred to as Verified by Evo or Evo Verified. Now this was actually introduced in 2019 as Project Athena to all the manufacturing partners and kind of got out to the tech press but didn't get out to consumers in 2019. Now, as part of the Evo platform, Intel has set forth a number of requirements. Some of them are specific to hardware that's required on board, and some of them are usability benchmarks. Let's start with the hardware on board. Of course, you're getting an Intel CPU. It has to be a new 11th gen CPU from Intel. These are going to be Core i5 or Core i7 G7 processors. Core i3 does not count for the Evo platform. And these are four core, eight thread processors, really nothing new in that regard, but they are 20% faster than 10th gen core and actually about 40% faster than Intel CPUs from just three years ago. So it's a pretty big leap in performance. The G7 in the name actually refers to the graphics and it's the new Iris XE graphics. This is actually where you get the biggest boost in performance. 
it's twice as fast in games and three times as fast in productivity as the previous gen graphics that we've had for about five or six years whether it was called hd 520 or 620 it was all the same thing Released in around 2015, it wasn't very good. Well, Iris XE is faster and it actually beats AMD's Vega graphics as well. So it is a pretty big deal. No, these aren't gaming laptops, but they are faster in terms of graphics, quite a bit faster, in fact. Now, you also have a requirement for Wi-Fi 6. Again, this is something that Intel manufactures, so it has some incentive to get this on board. But hey, just like in 2003 with Centrino, Intel is in a unique position to push the Wi-Fi market forward. And I think we all do need Wi-Fi 6 on board our latest laptops. And manufacturers might get lazy otherwise if Intel weren't pushing this new standard. You know, there have been routers for a couple years, but they haven't been selling that well. And I think it's because there aren't a lot of Wi-Fi 6 enabled devices. Well, now there will be with these new laptops. And of course, a few years ago, you could say, well, my ISP isn't very fast. My Wi-Fi is faster than my Ethernet connection or my Internet service. Well, that's not true anymore. People can go out and buy gigabit Ethernet monthly service for not that much money. And yet your router is definitely not that fast. So again, there's another reason to step up to Wi-Fi 6 and Intel is leading the charge there. You also have Thunderbolt 4 on board, a minimum of one up to two ports on the models I've seen on the market. And this uses the USB type C interface, but Thunderbolt 4 is really an Intel technology and it allows up to 40 gigabits per second of throughput, plus both charging and display over the same cord. Okay, so you've got one cable coming out of your laptop, you're charging your laptop, you've got display to your monitor, and you've got all the data going back and forth. Maybe you have your mouse and your keyboard connected to your monitor as your workstation. You've got it all set up in one cable. It's a really sleek system. You might even have some external hard drive connected to, through that hub on your monitor. It's all coming at up to 40 gigabits per second. So I think it really does make a lot of sense to have that as a standard. Yes, it's an Intel product, but I think it makes sense. You also have a couple of requirements for battery life. Number one, nine hours minimum in a real world scenario that's specified by Intel. I think this is the most important part of the Evo specification or verification process. No more gaming the system saying, I have twice as much battery life as my competitor uh, doing nothing at all, right? With a laptop screen dimmed all the way and nothing going on. Well, Intel is now gonna specify what you have to be doing to get that nine hour benchmark. There's also a requirement for fast charging. And while some earlier documents spell this out in detail, at this point, Intel is just saying fast charging and leaving it up to manufacturers. You also have a requirement of a wake time from sleep. So let's see what this laptop can do. Mm, about one and a half, two seconds. The latest Evo laptops will do that in under one second. It, it's actually a requirement from Intel. So, you know, whether it's one second or two seconds isn't really that relevant in the grand scheme of things, but it does contribute to that user experience. Like, is my laptop responsive? Does it feel good to use? And that wake from sleep time is actually pretty important to people. By the way, they also have an odd bezel to screen ratio they require. It's not actually specified for the public. It's something they've probably just told the manufacturers. They call it razor thin. You'll see that in the marketing. It's not razor thin. I know what a razor looks like. These bezels are not razor thin, but they're very slim. So you'll see that all these laptops that are Evo certified or verified have relatively thin bezels, but you're not gonna know what the specification is. Most of these Evo laptops, because they're relatively high end, will have touchscreens, not all of them. Most of them will be around 13.3 to 14 inches. There might be some larger ones up to 15.6 inches. Now, one thing you won't see in the specification is a requirement about weight. This wasn't part of the Ultrabook standard either. And I think it's a little bit disappointing. And frankly, most of these laptops are gonna come out being around the same weight anyway. They're all about 2.8 to 3.1 pounds, but that's where laptops have been for a really long time. And I'd love to see Intel move the ball forward a little bit more in the next revision of the Evo platform. Look, LG and its Gram laptops have been under 2.2 pounds for a long time. So it's possible, but I bet partners like Dell and HP are saying, you know what, we just don't wanna deal with that. It requires us to change our manufacturing. It requires a change in the materials LG uses a plasticky feeling metal to get that low weight, whereas Dell is using carbon fiber and Asus is using beautiful aluminum, it weighs more, all right? So ultimately, it's kind of a trade-off. LG actually does have a number of Evo verified laptops. Interestingly, it doesn't show the badges in its marketing yet, and maybe because it's kind of late to the party, but they have a lot if you want something that 2.2 pounds. Asus has some from 2.5 to 2.9 pounds. Dell and HP are on the heavier side, more like 2.9 to 3.1 pounds. Now, if you have any questions about this video or the Intel Evo platform generally, definitely post them down below. 
If you enjoyed the video, definitely give me a like and subscribe. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.